These dice are absolutely wild looking. They look like they're made from pure magic. I honestly can't wait to be JK rolling these sorcerer's stones on my table. Now look, I'm no Nick Cage. I don't currently have anyone studying under me, but if you want to learn how to make dice like these, I'll consider all of you my sorcerer's apprentices. That's right, baby, we're back to making some more class-themed dice, and today we're gonna to be focusing on sorcerer class dice. We're gonna be making two styles. We're gonna use black draconic ancestry sorcerers and wild magic sorcerers. To do that, let's go ahead and start on the black draconic ancestry one. So I'm gonna be using some Envirotex light resin. Any casting resin will do. Mine is a one-to-one -one part by volume, so I'm gonna mix these two up just enough until there are no more streaks between the resin and it's completely clear. Then we can start using some some alcohol ink. The reason I'm using this pitch black alcohol ink instead of like a black mica powder is because I want there to be some transparency left in this black. And as I'm mixing this up, you'll see it's a little bit green, but as it cures, it will not turn green at all. It will just be this slightly translucent black. I could have even used less if I wanted it to be more transparent. I'm going to be using a cap mold instead of a sprue mold because I'm going for a reverse petri dish style dice here. I haven't seen that done often and I wanted to experiment and see what could happen and if that's actually doable. I only fill up each of these molds about a third of the way with this black color because the rest of it has to come after the dice has totally cured. So you can see as I'm filling it up, it's only going up a third of the way of the dice. And again, that looks green, but it's going to turn very, very dark black. I also have extra resin that I'm going to pour in this jumbo dice mold that I have. It's probably about twice as big as a normal die. I'm going to try and combine the black draconic ancestry die with a little bit from the wild magic into one jumbo die and see what we get by the end of the video. This is the easiest part of the whole process. You don't even need the lids for this because there's not near enough resin for them to come out of this. So I don't need to put wax paper down to make sure that my little pressure pot insert is going to be messed up or anything. I can just stick that insert right into my pressure pot and get this thing powered up to 40 PSI as I let them cure in there for their entire 12 hour duration. Now I have a new place. You might notice that the lighting looks a little bit different. So I'm gonna be experimenting with things in a few videos. Just bear with me till I find what I like best in my new place. After their little stint in the pressure pot, I can pull them out of the pressure pot, but I don't need to actually do anything to the dice in the molds. And you can see, like I said, they turned a really nice translucent black in there. That green is entirely gone. Now we get to the messy part, so I'm going to lay down some wax paper and definitely make sure you're wearing some gloves because you're absolutely going to get resin on your fingers when you do this. So I mix up another batch of resin and pour in just completely clear resin on top of the black. This is where we normally would be trying to do petri dish stuff style by doing the clear resin down at the bottom and then putting a color on top. I'm hoping that I can get something to work here by giving us some clear resin on top of a color so that it actually looks like the kind of tendrils of the petri colors are going up to the color rather than coming from it. Because I'm going for a black draconic ancestry, I'm going with green and black as my two colors of alcohol ink to try and make the petri effect happen. If you want to know what the petri effect is, by the way, I have a whole video on that. I'll link up in the corner now. But you can see here as the black alcohol ink touches the green, it starts to immediately move outwards and I'm hoping that it spreads downwards into the clear resin. But now we need to wait. We have to wait for a solid probably 10 or 15 minutes to let the petri dish effect start happening. If you try and add some extra resin on top too early, absolutely nothing will happen. And you can see one problem that I do run into here is because I'm doing a reverse petri dish method, a lot of that color that's on the top seeps out and flows off of the side, which is disappointing, and I'll show you that in the final iteration of the dice. That D6 there actually did really, really well. A lot of the color came out of the other dice, and the D6 is going to be the best looking one from the set, which you will see here as the dice are done and now out of the pressure pot. Looking at the final product, you can tell where it went wrong was I should have let the clear part of the resin go a little bit lower rather than starting it at the very edge of the mold. The D6 here looks perfect, exactly like what I wanted this set to look like. Up close it looks like this swirly green and black look. It actually hardly did the Petri at all. It somehow swirled itself in there. I guess that was probably when I poured the clear resin on top to dome off for the cap molds. Either way, this is exactly what I was looking for, but the rest of the set really ended up looking like this D20 here. Hardly any swirling or Petri effect from the green, and it really just kind of looks like a half black, half translucent dye and that's not exactly what I was looking for. It's not 
bad by any means, but it's gonna need some really cool ink coloring to make it look good. So we'll come back to that later and start working on the wild magic dice. This is a technique that I know works for a lot of resin, but I didn't know if it would work for dice. So we're gonna take six different mica powders, titanium dioxide, Tahitian teal, blue tide, king tut gold, tequila sunrise, and pow pow purple, as well as some of this hollow reflective mica powder. This stuff is like gold and crazy expensive. So if I'm using it here, you know this is gonna be worth the effort. For all of these mica powders, I want them to each have their own individual cup because we're gonna be doing stuff to them with a Q-tip or a little makeup brush to make things a lot easier. And trying to do it in a bag is just gonna be difficult. And whatever you don't use, you can just put right back into the bag, no worries. So for each colors that you use, try and get some contrasting ones so that they stand out well next to each other. To show you all more easily, I'm gonna show you everything on a D6, but I'm doing this to all of the other dice molds at the same time. I take this makeup applicator brush and dip it a little bit into some mica powder and then just start slathering it in the inside of the mold. Just pure mica powder right inside the mold, creating an almost shell of mica powder. I don't know if there's a name for this technique. I'm calling it mica shelling or powder shelling dice. I'm not sure, but that's what I'm going to call it from now on. I don't even clean the makeup applicator brush. I just dip it right into the next little bit of pigment. That's the benefit of having small amounts in each little cup there rather than trying to go into the bags. You're not going to have any cross contamination of pigment that you care about. And I'm going to be using all of this pigment for something else towards the end of the video as well with that extra sprue type dice mold that we're using. I just put a bunch of colors in there. I'm going for a wild magic sorcerer, so I'm thinking very bright and vibrant colors. So I tried to get a lot of contrasting things that were also bright, like this white color here, I normally wouldn't use, but I think it's going to pop very nicely on all of the other colors. And I actually dab it onto the roof or the cap mold as well, because we want some color on there. Having a cap mold like this is going to be really essential to getting color on every single side. And the higher quality you make your cap molds, the better. That way you might not even have to sand them. And I'll show you why sanding is going to be detrimental to this. I can tap out all of the extra mica powder and put it down into this cup. And you can see there's a lot of excess that was in there. You want to make sure you get that out because that can cause air bubbles as you put resin in later. Speaking of resin, let's go ahead and mix up enough resin to fill all of our molds, including that extra jumbo sprue mold that we have, and I'm going to mix in that hollow powder pigment. I'm going to completely fill this resin with this hollow mica powder. This is the stuff that it looks like goes on Pokemon cards, and I absolutely love it. It makes me feel super nostalgic, and it makes for amazing shots like this that are just absolutely full of color and probably freak some people's TVs out. It's gorgeous, and it's going to be the centerpiece of the dice. If you do the dice right, you honestly shouldn't see hardly any of this, but I'm not confident in my abilities to do that, and I also kind of want to show some of the hollow powder off. You can see some parts there on the D6. I actually didn't put pigment on because I want you to be able to see inside to the hollow powder. It's cool looking stuff and it also looks very much like wild sorcerer like magic. I fill up my cap molds overflowing as you normally do for cap molds and cover a little bit on the roofs or the caps of the molds as well. And as I fill all of them up, it's always a good idea once you're pouring resin like this to go over the top with a lighter to pop any surface bubbles that way you don't have any chances of bubbles or voids forming in your dice. I flip the caps over on top of the molds and bada bing bada boom you are done and ready to let these bad boys sit in the pressure pot. With that jumbo sprue mold style dice mold that I had I put the rest of the pigment in and just kind of shook it around and then I filled it up with the hollow powder and I want to see what happens and what I get. I'm hoping that we get something cool and maybe based on the intro you might see that it actually looks really cool, but I'll show you that off here in a minute. I tape it up to make sure that none comes out, and let's take a look at these dice. Oh man, actually, wait, where did the dice go? Uh, oh, wait, <laughs> here they are. I guess it was just a little bit of wild magic that made them disappear. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm so sorry. But let's take a look at these absolute beauties because these might be the prettiest dice that I've ever made. You can see why some people do do this splotch of mica powder whenever they work with resin. Usually just one or two colors looks amazing, but this combination of all the bright colors is absolutely astounding looking. This is so wild magic sorcerer if I've ever seen one. The only problem with these is you've created a shell of mica powder 
gunpowder. And sanding these dice at all is going to cause that shell to be removed. But that's why we planned for that with the hollow pigment, and I'll show you what that looks like here in a minute. But also, I've pulled out the jumbo sprue dice, which is a combo here of the black dragonborn as well as wild magic, and it looks fantastic as well. It looks like it has tiny little bubbles on it, but that's actually just clear resin that solidified to the surface of the mold before the mica powder went in there. So this one looks amazing as well. But going back to having to sand these things, because of this shell of mica powder that exists, as soon as we sand it, that's going to go away and all you're going to see is the hollow pigment on the inside. Luckily, with my cap molds, the only one of these that I actually do need to sand is this D20 here. You can see the lip is a little bit raised, so it needs sand sanding, as does the sprue one. After sanding, this is what it looks like. Because all of that hollow powder on the inside is amazing looking, it still looks very wild magic. And you might think that looks sloppy and the colors inside the numbers are horrible. And hold on, once we ink these up, you won't notice that at all. All you'll see is the bright colors. Here is the sanded combo jumbo D20 that we made, of which we are gonna ink gold, of course we are. And then for the wild magic, we're actually gonna ink it black, purely to let the wild magic colors shine. So for the combo one, inking it gold because I want it to be gold and this is gonna be one of my favorite jumbo D20s for a while. And then I ink the full wild magic set black. The black does a good job of letting the colors of the wild magic shine and not detract from anything. And so you can see Twintig perfectly fine while still admiring the wild magic colors. Look, I was happy to share this skill off with you all. I said I was happy to share this skill with you all. Come on, man. That's your cue. I'm, so, I'm sorry, I'm late. I'm sorry. Uh, am I supposed to say the thing now? Yeah, say the thing. Uh, did somebody say Skillshare? God, I'm still good at transitions. Thank you so much to Skillshare for continuing to sponsor my videos. And if you haven't heard of Skillshare, it is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for all you creative and curious people out there. Helps you explore some new skills, deepen your existing passions, or just get lost in creativity itself. I learned a lot of the color theory that I use to pick the colors for the Wild Magic Sorcerers from classes like the ones that Jezza does in this. Big name YouTubers like Jezza have their own classes like his Mastering Illustration and Sketching, Inking and Color essentials class, which gives me hope that one day maybe Skillshare will hire me to do a transitions class. If you like my content, you'll probably love his class. We explain things in a similar way. It's made specifically for learning, so there's no ads, and they're always making a ton of new premium classes, so you can just stay focused and just follow your creativity. And at less than $10 a month for an annual subscription, it's a steal. But if that's not enough for you, you can actually do us both a favor because the first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description will get a free trial of premium membership so that you too can explore your creativity. Back to the video and the all-important glamour shots, the only reason I didn't ink these black draconic ancestry sorcerer dice is because one, I have some new colors coming in that I think would look better, and two, I kind of want to retry that petri dish effect. So if you have a color you think would look best, let me know in the comments below because I have a lot of them coming. However, this one that it is a combo between the Black Dragon Ancestry and the Wild Magic is just mwah, absolutely killer looking. A crazy good looking Jumbo D20 and some of the mica actually got down under the black part so it kind of helps it blend very very easily. And of course I like the gold part of it. Now these Wild Magic dice though are my absolute favorite dice and I feel like I say that every single time. I actually really like this almost vein of hollow that seems to run along the D20 and you can see the bottom here once you ink the numbers black I still think it looks absolutely awesome. If you don't, you just need to make a cap mold that you don't need to sand things on. My other six from this seven piece set, I didn't need to sand at all and they look fantastic. There are probably a few tiny imperfections that sanding would have taken care of, but all in all, I don't see any problem with these dice. If you do, I guess you'd have to change it up, but I think that they look fantastic and so I'm gonna keep them because they're for me and I'm definitely gonna be using them for a long time to come. This video came as a suggestion from my patrons over on Patreon. Once a month, they get to pick a video that I'm gonna do and I'm doing a smorgasbord of them in January in February to make up for all the time that I had to spend moving in December and November. So this is one of the many videos to come from my patrons at Patreon. They suggested a class die. They just didn't know they were getting Sorcerer. And 
I got to say, they didn't know they were getting some absolute beauties like this. I'm very, very proud of these. And that's something that more people should say. They should say that they're proud of the work that they've done. I hear so many people say, ah, this is, you know, they look okay. Be proud because you make amazing things. And this time I'm proud. I think I made something amazing here. And I hope that I get to see some of the amazing things you all make in a similar style. Enough rambling about me saying, be proud of what you do. Thank you so much for watching. Maybe consider subscribing if you want to make some more dice like this or learn how to make different dice in the future. I do a whole lot of that on this channel. I am so excited about some of the amazing things I have planned in 2021 for all of you, so maybe stick around for those. Everybody take care of yourselves this year, and I hope that you all have a fantastic 2021.